I got you. We about to do some pictures. Where you, the jewel at? I don't have it. Bro, who took it? I left it on the table. What's going on, world? Brand new episode of Open the Box here on your screen. I'm your host, George Kill, and I'm about a mile away from Eight Mile, right? Yeah, yeah, nine miles. With Juan of Loose Cannon. Juan is doing some crazy stuff in the Detroit area. We're about to see his, his Loose Cannon flagship store. We about to show y'all how Detroit boys get down real quick, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I already see how they get down with the socks, man. Remember when Biggie said Coogee down to the socks? Yeah. Like a lot of cats don't remember that, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no Coogee socks. Yeah. Like they had hats and everything else, so I was just brainstorming one day and I was like, bro, what if we really made Coogee socks? Yeah. So I went to my man's Nick and Nick was like, I can do it. <laughs> I can do it. Um, but it's gotta be perfect. And yeah. I was like, I got you, Nick. Grab the Coogee sweater. He did his surgery. Yeah. And this is the prototypes. So we're gonna see more of what you created. We're in for a treat, man. Let's go check it out. Uh, after you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate you. Now, Juan, the crazy thing about this store and your story is this place started from cookies? Yeah, yeah. So originally, like before shoes and everything, I was more into music. The original plan was to start a record label and have the artist perform my clothes. The bigger the artist got, the bigger the clothes got, but that kind of fell through. My brother in the 90s, he studied abroad and he yeah. ended up going to Amsterdam. So when he went to Amsterdam, he, uh, he grabbed these cookies. So when he came home, he just kept telling my grandma about these cookies, these cookies, these cookies. And so my grandma, she uh, looked at the recipe and she actually made them. And she made them, to me, she made them better than what he brought home. I was studying clothing brands. I was going through, I'm like, yo, like what's the, what's the catch? If you don't have like that catch, that one thing that's gonna make people come back, then what do you have? So like Johnny Cupcake has cupcakes. And so I thought about it and I was like, yo, what, what's a cannonball? A cannonball is round. You know what I'm saying? I was like, cannon cookies. And so I talked to my grandma. I was like, grandma, if you make these cookies for me, I'm gonna cut you in. Let's say if I made $2,000, 1,500 came from the cookies, 500 came from the clothes. Man, let me try. Yeah. Yeah, I, I Crazy, get, right? Yeah, I get, I get fat in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I broke the first rule of Biggie, bro. I got to hire my own supply. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Juan, before we get into, you know, everything we have going on here, I need to know what's the meaning behind Loose Cannon. Real spit. Loose Cannon used to be a nickname. Around 2009, man, like, my grandfather passed away. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Charlie Neal, my man. And, uh, man, I wowed out. Like, I didn't have no male figures. Rick of Burn Rubber, my yeah. main man, they had a 10 deep button up, and on yeah. the back it said Loose Cannon. And Rick was like, yeah, fam, you can need to cop this. This you, you a loose cannon. I was like, you right. But you know, after a while, it was like, own the name. Don't be the name, own the name. So, you know what I'm saying? To me, like a loose cannon just means, you know, we don't follow no rules. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't have to walk in a straight line. Yeah, we don't have yeah. to stand. Yeah. We can kneel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We can do whatever we need to do. I'm looking at, at stuff all around and this catches my eye off top. A long time ago, man, when I was working my old job, I met a, a young boy named Griffin Goodman. He went to New York for art school. And when he came home, he didn't have nowhere to put these. So he actually took a real Jordan 3, made a mold first, mm -hmm. and then he poured a cement like plaster in it. He made six of these and I just thought it'd just be dope, you know what I'm saying, to put them in the store out here so people can pick them up, see them. People okay. don't realize like how, how heavy these things yeah, are. Yeah, man. these mad real. I get my curls on with these <laughs> when I don't have time to go work out. We tried to take like the name of the building. We're inside the building, it's called the art building. So we wanted to take, you know, hold of that and, and really make this into somewhat like a museum. It's art all around. We just like to spread the love, you know, my favorite albums, NERD, you know, just something where people can come in and it's not just about copping clothes. It's right. about getting the feel, the vibe. Right, right. And I'm gonna put you on the spot. I need the top five art elements in this store right now. My personal, you got my Supreme, poster over here that I call Philip Walker, the late night stalker, because it seems like when you walk around, the eyes are following you everywhere. 
This painting right here is a personal painting by James Grady. This was made by my little cousin, Nikki. This is the Canon C. My other nickname is Camo Wine, so I love camouflage, which we'll get to that later on yeah. with that creation. Oh, definitely Illy Mac. Illy Mac is a local artist. He'll just go around, man, and he'll just draw you and just pull up on you. He ended up just drawing. I didn't even know he drew it, and he came in here. He was only asking for like five. I gave him like 30 bucks, bro. Yeah. So that was just dope because I don't think my beard would ever looked that good. But, you know. <laughs> Probably fifth would be Spike Lee, man, which is like my hero. Uh -huh. Of course, you got the camo. He's from Brooklyn, but we had to put Detroit on his head. I yeah. hope Spike don't get mad at that. <laughs> he ain't Mars Blackman, he Canon Blackman in here. Speaking of camo, I need you to explain that. You know what's crazy, bro? Like, this how I know you good luck. Today represents seven years ago that I designed these with my man's El Cappy. Mm -hmm. But these are the camo phones. And if anybody ever remembers when the first sample came out when nike finally released their phones that the actual sample had a red sole and it came with red laces so i don't know if they were you know thinking no, you know way no, you know or whatever you but know. the original phone of course y'all know came out with the the peanut butter sole and the laces and everything this was the second custom that i had made the first custom i made was the south beach six i always designed the shoe and then he would paint it for me. Tell me about the, the sneaker culture here. What do you see people buying the most? What do you see people rocking the most? Just, you know, all over Michigan. Man, well, the old cats, bro, they don't touch Yeezys. Yeah, they still yeah, want yeah. OJs. They ask for all the ones, the fours, the threes, sixes. My young boys, they about the comfort, which is good because they don't want them brown, brown toes. <laughs> So, you know what I'm saying? They they get like 500s, 350s. And then people like me, my cousin Ken, probably Jake, we just go for what we love. Let's actually go over here to the shoe wall. But first I want to get on the actual shoe wall, literally this piece of art here. We actually throw art social events where we invite black artists from the community. DJ Hype Beast come through and go crazy. Yeah. And uh, we party till we can't party no more because yeah. Kimmy, my building manager, let us do it. <laughs> my man's Mike drew that for me. He just felt like that wall was naked and yeah. he needed something else on there. So I hung that up for him. So it stayed there. Back on the Detroit culture, uh, what do you see fly off this shelf the most? Right now, man, it's been between the Yeezys, mm -hmm. definitely the Travis Scotts. We sold a lot of white Vapor Maxes. I'm seeing a gym. My favorite color is gray. Yeah. So 3M is gonna have to pass for gray. Shout out to my man's Maceo. That's actually his pair. That's a size 15. Now you, you talked earlier about events. You guys throw a lot of events. Tell me about the events. Yeah, I can't really talk about the swap without my man's Jake, bro. That's really the creator right there. Say hello to my mini me. <laughs> I was 13, 14 and it was, Juan was working at Pogo. And Pogo was like our first sponsor. It was like our first shoe store we were close with. We had been going there for years. So they ended up sponsoring the event for us. And Juan was the one, he was the assistant manager there. So he was the one that like knew all the shoes, interacted with all the people. Like he'd interact with me and my brother when we came in. So when it came down to it, my brother actually helped start the event too. And uh, we just came in to talk to Juan one day. We're like, we need to reach like new people. Why don't you be a part of it? Like you can help out. He ended up advertising it way more than we wanted to. I mean, he'd set up the loose cannon tables. He'd go crazy with the clothes and the cookies. So, I mean, it just made sense to bring him on board too because he'd yeah. done so much to bring people in. He was there since the start. Now, let's kind of go into your role with loose cannon. Uh, you more, you know, streetwear. Yeah, so like, I do mostly yeah. like the streetwear buying. Me and Juan kind of do the shoes together while he handles like the brand. And then I take care of like the Babe Supreme, getting all that stuff in, getting like cool setups like this, just all the yeah. different figures, stuff you're not going to see anywhere else in Michigan and it just kind of adds to the whole store's dynamic. Kind of go into how you, you actually came across all of these. So I actually got pretty lucky. I've been in a cause for a couple of years. Shout okay. out to my friend Sean Day. He sold me that real skateboard deck right there. Mm -hmm. But um, he sold me like one of these cause bear bricks and kind of like dropped the knowledge on me when he sold me it. Yeah. I think I was like 14 and I just slowly started getting more figures. We try to get a mix of everything. Like the goal is basically, no matter who comes in here, you want to have something for them. Mm -hmm. Like streetwear wise, that's why we'll bring in a little kith, little antisocial, just all those brands. We'll get a couple crew necks, hoodies, all that stuff. But we always like to bring in like the rare stuff. So like the Medicom collab here, mm -hmm. the old Babe Cause collab here, just like the jackets, all that stuff. But we definitely like to get like lower end stuff, general release, rare, just a mix of everything. So no right, matter who right. comes in here, they're gonna find something they want. Now you mentioned the mall earlier and the connection you have there. Tell me about that. 12 Oaks Mall, which is about 30 minutes from us, had 
a space opening where four people, four shops can go in per weekend and then they just set up and there's four pop-up shops in there and they can interact with their people, get all the mall customers. It's a whole different crowd over at the mall. It's like Farmington Novi area, which is like opposite side of town from us in Ferndale. So it gets all those kids, all those customers that hang out at the mall, they mm -hmm. come in and see us. Mm -hmm. We let them chill in there, do whatever they want. And then we tell them about the store and they're always welcome to come hang out in here. Yeah, So yeah. I mean, kids definitely love it. It's like a chill spot. There's a, a picture here that, that's very iconic of you, Juan, and two other cohorts, I, I would assume, yep. right? Yep. Tell me about that and tell me about just the events in general. I'll be playing the arcade while you're doing that. You're good. So the event started in, uh, like I said, 2012. We basically started getting the legwork together. It was me, my brother, Adam Shapiro, and Seth Blazowski. Peron decided to. And then Juan came in the second or third event, but we started at Modern Skate Park. We basically just advertising the shoe groups, like the Facebook groups got 200 people out, 30 tables, and then we just kept uh, making it bigger from there. We're aiming to do two to three Michigan Sneaker Exchange events a year, and then Juan's event Trade Wars, which we're doing too. We're trying to do those just in between the Michigan Sneaker Exchange events, just to give people like that time to come get money so there's not like a four month gap where they yeah. can't have any events here. Tell the people where we can find you guys. We're at uh, 195 West Nine Mile Road in Ferndale, Michigan, and then we're on Instagram at Loose Cannon Brand. We always post all our new inventory, all the steals coming in, all the new Babe Supreme, Vintage, Streetwear, all that stuff on there.